Welcome back to another instant reaction edition of the Night Report podcast. Uh, Richie, massive, massive commitment today from Gavin Griffiths. He's a top 30 recruit out of uh, Kingswood, Oxford School in Connecticut. Yeah. Uh, he's a 6'7 wings, right about 200 pounds. I think he's listed out. He's a sharpshooter. Like uh, this is probably going to shut up some of the Pike haters for a little bit, but this is arguably the biggest commitment Rutgers basketball has ever received. And I, and the old heads are going to be like, what about Phil Bailey? Blah, blah, blah. But in recent memory, it's like him, Cliff, Mike Rosario in the last 20 years. <sighs> what about Bailey? <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, yeah. We're, if you, we do recruiting rankings since 2002, 2003, whatever it was when they started. So, so we're going based off that, that they, he is the top recruit they've ever landed um the, hell of a get um i i wasn't expecting this one um it, it seems like one of those official he had a great Farker's official visit spoke with us afterwards we posted an article he loved everything about it kind of a little bit of optimism there but then you hear he's going to michigan and virginia tech and it's like michigan's sneaky um juan howard's obviously a pretty good recruiter so it, it was a little concerning but now he canceled those decided what i want to say a week or two after that visit that Rutgers visit in it's, it's the talk of the UIBL right now. That's what everyone's talking about is Gavin Griffiths and how his great performances in the couple AAU games um, yesterday, day before, whatever it was. And now um, it's, it's just huge. Like, this is like a huge get for Rutgers. You got a top 30 prospect on, on board. Like, after a class that was a little lackluster in 2022, you start off 2023 with a bang. So it's uh, this is an interesting one. Yeah, no, this is just – Way better than I could have imagined, honestly. Like, we, we see that we're in on a lot of these top guys, but it seems like just something happens midway through a recruitment for basketball, and they end up going to these power fives or these big powerhouse schools. <clears throat> Kyle uh, Lofton. Kyle Lofton. <clears throat> Kyle Lofton, yeah. Uh, all the guys we've lost to Villanova over the years, yeah. um, to UConn. Uh, but this is a kid, and I think it takes, like, a different type of kid to really – to gel with, with Pike. And it seems like he's that kind of guy. I've watched a few interviews with him. He seems mm -hmm. like he comes from a great background. His parents both played uh, college basketball. His dad was a standout for University of Hartford. I think his mom was as well. Uh, his dad was basically saying that Gavin could do things at 17 that he couldn't do at, as a 23 year old playing overseas in Europe. So uh, just this kid is a natural born and bred basketball player and it shows on film. He's He's an amazing player. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, can, I can give you the good or the bad first. Which one you want of his Let's game? Go with the good first. All right. Well, I mean, he plays decent competition. He's six seven. He's could shoot the lights out of the building. Like, I mean, his his shot we talked about off camera is a little unorthodox. It's not the best thing in the world, but it, it goes in. And I guess that's really all that matters at the end of the day. Um, he he, he definitely has to get stronger, but um. He's a pretty good free throw shooter. Um, I'm trying to look at all these notes I wrote down. He's very long wingspan. Uh, he's, he's a pretty good passer too. Like, and he works with a bunch of different dudes. He's playing with uh, on that expressions team. I think they have number thirty Taylor Bowen and number nine. Uh, I'm not even gonna pretend I know how to pronounce his name. Something with an M. Um, he's number nine in the country. So I mean, you can you can kind of pick up how good he is. Um, pretty good, solid like basketball IQ in terms of offense. He kind of. Doesn't force anything. Doesn't uh, force any turnovers. Um, his defense is the is the big question mark. That's where I'm like, I don't really know yet. And you can't tell in these AAU games because I, I don't even know what they do in terms of defense there. Maybe you get one highlight per game, but it's uh. But I guess you can kind of argue that's with most recruits nowadays. But uh, yeah, I mean this is this is a great kid. He's a great offensive player. He's six seven, six eight around that area. He's gonna have to pack on weight. Obviously, I think he's. 200 maybe 190 around there but uh the only thing that I, I i hate to say but i wish we would get to see him next to cliff and i don't know if we're gonna get to do that so that's that's where it's a little tough yeah no i think the the team he is playing on when he gets here is gonna be a bit of a shocker to rucker sands because we're so used to having this like core of guys for the last yeah. four or five years like we're in such a unique place with college athletics with guys getting that extra year for covid mm -hmm. so i mean we might see this year it'll look there's be there'll be like a semblance of what we're used to but by the time he's there by the time griffiths is on campus like it's gonna be like Derek simpson and him as like the one-two punch possibly and then yeah. cam spencer's in his last year 
probably have another. I, I think Pike will be able to get a pretty big time transfer as well, mm. but it'll be a drastically different team. And it, I mean, that's typically how college as, athletics is where there's a churn. We're kind of in a lucky situation to have as many guys stick around as long as they did. Yeah. Uh, but he's, he's the future of Rutgers basketball moving forward for the next four years. Maybe yeah. less. No, I, I mean, hundred percent agree. Um, this, this team is going to be a lot different. Um, most times we're saying like, yeah, Rutgers is going to have to rebuild uh, after losing all these veterans and it's like oh wait hold on they they might have just reloaded like just got a top 30 kid and i can't say enough about his shooting like and th this is huge because everyone's always wanted this stretch four type for i guess ever since i started writing about Rutgers. Yep. even before then probably everyone wants that stretch four guy stretch four guy and that you're finally getting it this guy is if you watch his tapes like he's getting double teamed quite a bit but he's still oh, managing yeah. to put the ball in the hoop like without with ease um does he have to work on some things? Yeah, but which recruit doesn't? I mean, no recruit's perfect. I maybe DJ Wagner, but that's that's still up for debate. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, I mean, uh, he he looks pretty good. Like in all these highlight tapes, like it's you, there's no question why he's a top thirty prospect. So I mean, yeah. defense questionable, but offense there, offense is one hundred and ten percent there. Like there's no question whatsoever. Yeah, no, he's got he's got a pretty good handle. Uh, he's able to create his own shots pretty obviously on tape. He's a guy who probably can gain 30 pounds and not lose any of the explosiveness because he's got some pretty good hops too. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in high school this past year, he averaged 24 points, eight rebounds, four assists, and he was named the uh, NEP SAC Class B Basketball Player of the Year. Um, so he's just a total stud all around. And I'm really excited to see what – because, I mean, I think you can point to Cliff and say Pike's had a pretty outstanding record with the top guys he's gotten because he's only gotten one so yeah. far. Um, so I think if he develops anything like Cliff has, I think we're going to see a, probably the leading score for Rutgers for at least two years. Yeah. And it, the, the most interesting thing that I think a lot of people aren't really talking about yet, they're, they're all hyped about the commitment. So I get it. But if you read the commitment article, like he talks, the biggest thing he says, he's like, I, yeah, when I toured the campus, I saw the dorms and I saw the facilities and everything there is just brand new. And, you're starting to see the impact that that RWJ Barnabas Athletic Performance Center that has way too long of a name um, <laughs> is, is starting to make. Um, I know everyone calls it APC, but like, come on, like, what's that? So, regardless, you, you know what I mean. But um, it is it is like starting to make that impact, and people are seeing that. Like, you'll start to see it in women's basketball too. Like, no other women's program has that facility. No, yeah. You can argue no other men's program might have a facility like that. Like, this is like a top notch facility. Even talking to like some of the AAU coaches and um, some of the rivals guys are like, holy shit, like that building's got some, like, you go see those videos, like, damn, that thing's nice. Like, and it's, it's next yeah. level. Like, and people don't, I don't think hype it up enough. And I think that's what Griff's doing that. I think that you're starting to hear more and more and you'll see its effect on recruiting more and more. Yeah, for sure. And I, I remember watching Pike do like a walkthrough of the building when it was just finished. And he's like, like he's showing like the area where you can like watch practice and the area where like scouts are supposed to come. Like they had all these things set up and he, he, there's this like little corridor. And he's like, this is where I'm going to close the guys. This is where I'm going to make my finishing pitch. And he's just like, he had everything laid out in his mind about how this thing's going to work. And it's finally coming to fruition. Um, yeah. And it's tough to, it's tough to, because recruiting is so, it's, it's so black or white. Like you either landed the guy or you didn't. Yeah. And so at some point it's going to break your way if you're a good recruiter and you got the right stuff you're selling. And this is an example of things broke our way. Like this is the kind of kid that we're really going to need. If we're going to take that next step as a program, we're going to need a couple of these guys um, on the team at any given point. So mm -hmm. this is just, I feel like the next step in the evolution of Pike, because this is a guy who's going to be a go-to scorer. He's going to be a, a three point shooter. He's a great free throw shooter. And like, those are things that we've kind of struggled with at points under Pike and I'm just so hyped for this kid to get on campus <laughs> yeah no it, it, it's a huge one now now you can kind of do this this thing where you're kind of like hey we got this guy on board like you want you want to come on board too like what are, we, what are we talking about now so um obviously like everyone keeps mentioning like who's he who can he bring on who can he bring on like I, I don't know if it's necessarily like a specific person everyone's going to mention Papa Conte because he did go on an official visit with him and his family so they are close so he's obviously going to push him which would be a great get now, Papa Conte is also dominating the AAU circuit right now. 
So I, yep. I think he's going to blow up a little more than he already has. He already has a bunch of big offers. Now he's going to blow up even another level. So I'm not sure they're going to be able to, to snag him, but someone else said Taylor. No, who was it? Taylor Bowen. And then there was someone else, Meyer Wall, um, who are two guys that are highly ranked. Well, I don't think Wall has a ranking, but he will be highly ranked. Um it's, it's going to be tough. It's, it's, going to, it's still going to be tough to land these other big fish, but I do think that you have this starter piece in, um, in Gavin Griff. So now it's like you can kind of sell people on this. Is it, and maybe even in the future it could help. Like this, this could help be the start of like, hey, like Dylan Harper, I know like you got all these – you're going to have all these big offers. You didn't get them yet, but you're, you're probably going to get Duke. You're probably going to get UNC. You're probably going to get Villanova. Um, but, hey, like let's, let's do this again. Let's, let's run it back like Harper 2.0 and – we got a guy for you, a shooter over here. You could be the main scoring threat, but this guy's a sharp shooter. Could help you out, and who knows? Yeah, no, I, I think that's a great point you made, that this could be the one-two punch if Dylan Harper is really sold on Rutgers. Seems like he's he's obviously been here a ton. He knows exactly what he, to expect if he gets on campus, I feel like. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I did want to talk about something that we kind of mentioned off, off air. Um so Gavin Griffiths is the eight, 28th ranked player on Rivals. You had heard some rumblings that that might be uh, – this was from weeks ago too, so this isn't because he committed yes. to Rutgers. That, oh, his, everyone calm down. that his ranking might be slide, might slide a little bit like into the 40s, but it's mm -hmm. not going to take a huge drop down. Yeah. Uh, now that might have changed because this past weekend the uh, EYBL tournament happened down – I think I don't know exactly where it was. I think it happens down south. And, and apparently he just was – incredible down there he had a, like it's a big aau tournament so a lot of the top guys are there the rivals guys were there yeah. and like there, there were so many people glowing about him just from like his ability to take over a game um so maybe he won't drop maybe he'll rise but yeah it sounded like he was going to take a little bit of a dip and that's not necessarily because of anything he did wrong yeah no i mean if you watch his tape like i, I think 28 is like if you're a top 30 kid you should probably be a program changer i don't know if he's necessarily that He's a very good player. Don't get me wrong, like a very, very good player. But I don't, I can't see him coming in and averaging like fifteen to twenty immediately. Like he's not one of those guys. But and they, they're like, like you said, like it was, it was a couple of weeks ago that I, I meant I talked to the rivals guys and a couple higher ups, and the, the plan was to drop him, but he just dominated this weekend. So it's like, I do think he's probably in the forty to range. I don't think he'll go anywhere past that forty number. Um, I do think he's still a very good prospect. I think he's going to be phenomenal at Rutgers. I think he fits the mold that Rutgers is looking for. It's that stretch four that you never had before. Yep. Um, he's, he's just – he's a very good player, like, at the end of the day. So, I mean, don't let the rankings discourage you regardless. I don't know when those updates are going to come, probably not until July, or actually post-July because that's another life period. So, some, somewhere around then, but in this summer. But, um, yeah, no, I mean, this is – technically right now, he is the highest-rated recruit in Rutgers history, other than Phil Bailey. <laughs> yeah i'm glad we got that one back in there yeah <laughs> um so he's a class of 23 kid he's the only commitment in the class of 23 do you what's your your feeling on this class of, do we add another kid or two or, or are we done or is this like is this recruiting so fluid that it's just you get the best guy whether it's a transfer whether it's whatever Talk us through where we're at with this class. Yeah, so I was looking at the scholarship chart. Technically, with uh, Griff's on board, there's still two more spots. Now, obviously, there's there's going to be transfers out, or there's always a trend, at least one transfer out, unless you're Rutgers, which is like one of three three programs that doesn't have a transfer out. <laughs> so, I guess I shouldn't say there's always going to be a transfer out, but you have to assume there's most likely at least one. Um, who could that be? I, I'm not even going to speculate. But if you look at the roster, you can probably kind of guess and guess and check a little bit but uh yeah no i mean they're, they're definitely i think they add one to two more i think you save one ship for a transfer portal guy because you are going to need a a big man i guess tech I, I didn't even think about this duh like cliff might not be here so there's that so i guess then then there's two open or actually look we so, so put it like this right now there's three griffs would make it two cliff leaves it's back to three but we know pike likes to keep one open like every year for like a walk on or something Yep. So, that, so now it's back down to two again. If Cliff leaves, there's back down to two. Maybe a transfer leaves. So maybe like a Conquest leaves because he's not playing much, which obvious speculation. Then it's back up to three. Then it's like, all right, you got to at least get one more high school guy at the very minimum, I would think. Who is that going to be? I, I don't know. I kind of look through the uh, 
through the offers so far. And I do think you'll see some more offers out. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a, a Duke commit, a Gonzaga commit, and a Wisconsin commit right now. The rest are all open, but they're all pretty highly ranked. Um, one guy I'd probably keep a close eye on is Giancarlo Paguero mm -hmm. out of uh, Gil St. Bernard. He's the, the Puerto Rican native who transferred into uh, Gil St. Bernard's this past off, this past off season. And actually looked pretty good. I actually got a chance to see him in person versus Camden, which is the best program in the state and one of the best in the country. And uh, he looked good. He looked really good. Um, he took a visit to Rutgers back in February. And it's it's a feet, it's a not a feeder program, but it's a, a pretty big program. Like they have they have a lot of big name recruits year in and year out. Rutgers has done pretty well with them. They have a good relationship with them. I feel like every time I go watch a practice at Rutgers, for some reason, Cena, their head coach, is always there. <laughs> so that's a good. <laughs> It's a good sign. Um, yep. And plus, uh, Paul Mulcahy. So, I mean, you kind of sell him on that. And if you can get him there, get uh, Paguero, get Griffs, and it's a, it's a pretty damn good class. And not a transfer guy or a transfer big man. Ideally, you probably want to get a high school big man just because you, you want to develop him. But in today's day and age, I mean, a transfer big man seems like a good option. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I don't think that's a – I think you can go either way. I, I think if you can get the right transfer, big man, it's definitely worth it. Like it would have been great if we got that Lafayette kid who could have ah, yeah. for sure played 15 minutes a game for us and then been the starter whenever Cliff decided to leave. Um, but I think he ended up Penn State, right? Uh, Richmond. Richmond. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's right. We'll see. We'll see what happens with him. I'm kind of intrigued because they made the tournament last year. So they're not, they're not a bad team. They did. And they've had a few big runs in the tournament in the last 10 years. So yeah, we'll see what happens there. Team. That'd be an interesting one. So, yeah, we've, we've talked a lot about Gavin Griffins. Uh, is there anything that you – we haven't talked about with him or anything that's going on that you wanted to bring up before we sign off? Um, Not that I can think of. I mean, they have, they have a pretty interesting team this year going into uh, 2022. I do think they need more scoring. I don't think that's a question. Um, but in terms of recruiting, I mean, hell, this, this is a big get, and – you got to try to build on this and kind of keep the momentum going. It's uh, it's something that like, uh, I think Greg's talked about in football in the past. And it's just like, once you get that one, you just kind of like it rolls into another and another and just keep rolling it in the good info and good info or good scoops, I guess, nonstop. And with Griff's on board, you got to kind of try to do that. Um, I don't think you're going to be close to winning anyone at the moment, but you never know. So we'll wait and see right now. Yeah, no, because it seems like we were in it for Griffiths, but the, the OV is really what put us over the top. So yeah. we just got to keep staying in it for guys, get them on campus, get them to see the facilities. I mean, the rack sells itself if you can make some games. I think Griffiths did yeah. make it to a couple games when he was. Yeah, he's, he's been on year. campus like five times already. <laughs> like, yeah, um, because Rutgers kind of has suffered from like imposter syndrome with big time athletics. But if you go to the rack, you can't tell me that there's 10 better environments in college basketball than a big game at the rack. So, yeah, hard to argue. Rucker. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, no, this is, I, I'm just kind of fumbling over words because I'm still kind of in shock that we landed this kid. Uh, really happy for Pike. He can get some of the haters off his back um, and just continue to build what he's been building. Um, but, guys, really, really appreciate you guys coming back for two days in a row now of Instant Reaction Podcasts. Uh, keeps uh, keep tuned to the boards because I'm sure there'll be more information about this. Oh yeah, well, and what, uh, what it means for the basketball program in general, uh, and just everything else Rutgers related. Uh, this has been another edition of the Night Report podcast. Signing off.